Join Wondery Plus to listen to True Love one week early and ad-free in the Wondery app. Download the Wondery app in your Apple or Google Play mobile app store today. A quick note that this episode contains some adult language and allusions to sex. When people talk about dancers, you know what they never mention? The way our feet get mangled. Dancers' feet end up looking and feeling like they've been put in a blender. So when I say I've been rehearsing at the studio for the last three hours, know that this sister is committed. That, and I don't want to go home and face another evening of baby planning with Bo. But now it's pouring outside. Good luck finding a cab, Cassie. Turns out I'm not alone. Gina is sitting on a bench outside the door, scrolling through her phone. She looks just as surprised to see me as I am to see her. Cassie! Gina! I, I thought you left hours ago. I had some paperwork, and it's not like anyone else is going to do it. But you know, sometimes I wish I had someone to come home to. Like you. Right, Cassie? This is the longest conversation I've had with Gina since she caught me with Memphis last week after the opening of Thrive. That night she didn't say a word, and she didn't need to. I saw what she thought of me all over her face. And since then, she clearly hasn't stopped thinking about it. Of all the people to run into after my first and only time with Memphis, it had to be Gina Campbell. I need to talk to her, woman to woman, but not in this place where I feel like I'm talking to my boss. Are you going downtown? Sorta, of, kinda. Can I bum a ride? Oh, Cassie. I don't mean like door to door, just however far, sorta, of, kinda, goes. If Gina gives me a ride home, that's at least 30 minutes alone, just the two of us. But we can really hash it out, put this to bed. She just shakes her head and rolls her eyes. Fine, but there's no eating in my car. Walking side by side with Gina to the parking garage is hella awkward. I feel like I'm walking next to the principal. A principal that's got... A black Porsche? Damn! It's strange to be in such close quarters with this woman. Normally I try to stay as far away from her as possible in the studio, but... Now we're shoulder to shoulder and there's no emergency exit. The rain is getting worse outside. I watch through the windshield and take a deep breath. This is my chance to explain to her that it was just a one-time thing with Memphis. You know I love my husband, right? Ain't none of my business. I know, I just want to make sure that whatever you saw that night with Memphis and me isn't going to get in the way of working together. Oh, honey. It's worse than I thought. What is? You're focused on yourself and your ego. That's ridiculous. I've danced my entire life, trained at school for American Ballet. I'm all about the work. You know, I could have joined the Paris Opera or the American Ballet Theater. Dance is my world. Do you realize how many Cassies I've known over the years? Dancers that think they know it all and only they have the foresight and the talent to fix whatever show they're in and revolutionize the industry. You think you're special. You're not. You're just like every other... Oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. Watch out. People always say time slows down when a person is in danger. I can tell you firsthand it's true. As the car spins out on the slick stretch of blacktop, it's like watching a dancer on top of skates, spinning in two perfectly concentric slow-motion circles. What they don't tell you is how it ends. Or the silence after the crash. The only sound I hear is my own heartbeat and a wheezing rasp coming from Gina, like she's not getting enough air. I reach my hand out in the darkness, but all I feel is broken glass. She must have gotten turned around somehow. Gina? Gina! Nothing. No response. Okay, I know what you're thinking. This is bad. I'm thinking that too. You know what else I'm thinking? I hate to admit it, but there's a part of me that's a little bit guilty. Because when I feel my own legs, I'm fine. And Gina's clearly not. Wondery's new investigative podcast miniseries, Harsh Reality, digs into the behind-the-scenes drama of one of the most controversial reality TV disasters of all time. It's a story of love, lies, and reality television. To hear the whole story, follow Harsh Reality, the story of Miriam Rivera on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever you're listening right now. Hey, I'm Cassie DePeckle, the host of Wondery's Against the Odds. In our next season, a group of American rock climbers will have to fight for their freedom after being taken captive by rebel militants in the remote mountains of Kyrgyzstan. Follow Against the Odds on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever you're listening now. From Wondery, I'm Amber Sean Williams. And I'm Justin Walker White. And this is True Love. Each week, we bring you scandalous stories of love, lust, and heartbreak. In our last episode, Cassie and Memphis gave in to one passionate moment, but they're learning that hot choices can come with cold consequences. This is our four-part series called Dangerous Moves. And this is episode two, All Sorts of Wrong. The summer is the worst time to be in Houston, Texas. It's hot and sticky. And if you don't know what mud butt is, do yourself a favor and don't look it up. 
I've got two whole days with the family before I go back to New York for the final run of Thrive. I'm doing my best to erase the whole Cassie one-night stand from my brain. It's not hard when your two girls are wrapped around each ankle. Nadia and Harmony are eight and ten. I can't believe how much they've grown in just a few weeks of rehearsals, but not too old for a game of hide-and-seek. Found you. Nadia, I told you we need a different hiding place. Next time, let's hide in the garage. But the garage smells like daddy's feet. <laughs> and that's the cue for my wife. You're going to miss this in New York. I don't know. Maybe I'll just stay here in Texas with all of you. Don't tease. Who said anything about teasing? Last week in New York, I nearly destroyed my entire family. Getting caught by Gina was embarrassing enough, but what if it was worse? I can't bear to think of what would have happened if she called Katrina. Thank God she's been discreet. I'm not teasing. I'm just saying that it's a limited run. I know I've been working on you to move to New York, but maybe I just come home after Thrive and forget it. I can dance here in Houston. You can do that if you want. I just don't want you to resent me in a year when you get a change of heart. Honey, we're married. I have so many other reasons to resent you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brandon, what's up, man? Bro, did you hear? Hear what? Gina got into a car accident. It was bad, man. She's in a coma. I feel Katrina grab my hand. My face must register shock. I still haven't heard anything about the other dancer. What other dancer? Your co-star, Cassie. She was in the car with Gina. My heart drops. Katrina squeezes my hand. What's going on? My co-star, Cassie. She was with Gina in an accident. Katrina nods like she understands, but of course she doesn't. The lies, the secrets, and now this? No. She doesn't understand any of it. I should call someone. I was heading back tomorrow. I mean, is the show still going on? The show always goes on. They need you now more than ever. Okay, I'll call you when I land. Hey, and if you hear anything about Cassie before then, let me know. Will do. I feel Katrina's arms wrap around my waist. I'm sorry about your friend, honey. I know you two were close. Katrina's tenderness cuts deep right now. I don't deserve it. Hell, if she knew the truth about me and Cassie, she'd have bought me a one-way ticket back to New York herself. But I gotta shake it off. The guilt, the regret, the longing. I can't let one night get in the way of all the sacrifices I made for my family. Brandon's right. The show must go on. Arla Modern is on the fifth floor of this building. I usually take the elevator, but not today. Today, I'm taking the stairs, and I'm thanking God with every step. The doctor said I avoided most of the impact because I was in the passenger seat of Gina's car. They cleared me to go home that night. I feel guilty just for being sore. Everyone with two feet called to see how I was doing, but I didn't take anyone's calls. With Gina still in a coma, I didn't want anyone to make a big deal about it. God damn it. Girl, are you okay? All of the dancers run over and try to hug me. Alexis pushes them away with authority like she's my bodyguard. Give her space, y'all. Don't crowd her. Alexis, I'm fine. Guys, I'm fine. They wouldn't be so excited to see me if they knew I was the reason Gina got into that accident. You sure you're okay? The dancers part, and there's Memphis. Back from Houston and looking at me with troubled eyes, but trying to act casual. But it's not casual. Four days ago, I saw all of that man. And I'm having trouble even looking him in the eye. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. And, uh, welcome back. Thanks, I got in this morning. I went to the hospital to see Gina. She looks... Yeah. You can say you're fine all day, but I was super freaked out. We all were. And look who came all the way from Atlanta just to make sure you're okay. Well, you and Gene. Alexis points just over my shoulder at Arlen Jackson. He's the managing director of Harlem Modern. He's tall and slim and confident. Arlen's the money behind the honey. A former dancer who went into tech and then decided to give back to the community and invest in this place. Thank you to everyone for coming today. I've known Gina for over two decades. She's the foundation of this company, and I'd like to call for a moment of silence to pray for Gina to come out of that coma and make a full recovery. We all bow our heads in silence. I sneak a peek at Memphis, and he's looking at me, too. We do this a couple of times before I give him a little smile. Thank you, everyone. So, we have three more performances of Thrive. Moving forward without Gina at the helm is heartbreaking. But she, more than anyone, would say that the show must go on. She'd also say, hey, you're stepping on the one, not the two, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to move on for the sake of this show and for the sake of this company. So, with that being said, I'm here to announce the interim creative director of the Harlem Modern Dance Company until Gina returns. Oh, my God. Arlen is going to ask me if I want to take over. Who else would he ask? I'm next in line. It's everything I've ever wanted, but I feel hella guilty over the way it's going down. The interim director will be... Memphis White. What? Memphis will oversee the final performances of Thrive, and if Gina is still out, and this is really exciting... He'll direct another classic from Harlem Modern, Evolution. Oh, man. Oh, wow. 
Memphis smiles and walks over to me. Thanks, Arlen. I'll never be able to fill her shoes, but I'll certainly try to keep us going until Gina returns. And I know I'll have to lean on Cassie, our lead dancer. It's funny how fast things can change. Just a minute ago, I was thinking of ways to get alone with Memphis again. And now it's taking everything I have not to throw him out of the window. With Gina out and Memphis in, that leads me right where I started. On the sidelines. Beautiful jeté, Amina. But you wobbled on the landing, Amina. Alexis, you're a half step ahead of the music. And now you're a half step behind. This is what my entire day's been like. I give some direction and Cassie undermines me. If I said the sky is blue, she'd say the sky can kiss her ass. I get that she's pissed about Arlen passing her over. I would be too. But now we're a half step behind everything. All right, everyone, let's run through the piece again from the top. I head over to the mirror where Cassie's sitting on the floor, a notebook between her legs. Her face is fierce as she watches the dancers and furiously scribbles down notes. There's no denying that the woman is beautiful. I sit next to her and lean my head back against the mirror. You know they're all pretty great. You're being too easy on them. I know Cassie's anger and frustration isn't just about the dancers and me taking Gina's place. We haven't talked about what happened between us since I got back to New York. Now it's just awkward as hell. Neither one of us wants to bring it up, but it's time to clear the air. Cassie, listen. We never talked. I'm sorry about that. I should have called. It was a mistake. I'm married, you're married. Let's just leave it at that. No need to relive it. Besides, you've got what you wanted. Hey, that's not fair. I'm not some player that... I'm talking about being the new creative director. Interim. Interim creative director until Gina gets back. Mm-hmm. And what are you going to do with your shot? You're going to play it safe? Same old, same old? Hey, look, I'm not the enemy here. We were good out there. You are good. You have a gift, Cassie. There's no denying it. But people pay money to see shows like Thrive and Evolution because it's familiar. They were once new, too, but people like familiar. And I feel like we keep having this conversation. We keep having it because you resting on your laurels mean I got to rest there, too. And I don't want to rest. I want to fly. What's your story going to be? Cassie, my story is my business. But let me just tell you this. No one springs out of a void. Everything we build is built on the shoulders of the people who came before. She stands up abruptly, fire in her eyes. You're right. If you want to make excuses for playing it small, that is your business. But this conversation is over. Let's just get through the next few performances of Thrive and then we can all move on, okay? Damn, she's pissed. I watch her walk out the door, words ringing in my ears. Play it small. Easy for her to say. She's got the whole world ahead of her. I have two kids and a mortgage and one shot to make it back. But there's no denying it. Something about Cassie's passion inspires me to want to dream bigger. One of the most important things in a marriage is that each party compliments each other. So while I've been known to burn tuna salad, my husband Bo can cook. He tosses minced garlic into his cast iron pan like he's hosting a cooking show. He checks behind him to make sure I'm watching. It's his signature move, and I still think it's cute. Is that so Frito I smell? As if your real question isn't, can I get a taste? Bo grabs a spoon and dips it into the pot. He even blows on it first for me. Now that's a real man. Would Memphis ever do that? Nah, he'd probably just steal my spoon from behind my back. Harlem Modern picked Gina's interim replacement for Evolution. It's Memphis. Oh, the lead guy? He's good. That's great, honey. It's a good thing Bo doesn't take much interest in my work. If he did, I'd be in real trouble. No, it's not. It's bad because I thought they were going to give it to me. Oh, no, that's terrible. Thanks, baby. I hate that I can't tell Bo how I really feel. How I'm turned upside down because I slept with Memphis. And it's terrible to admit it, but I'm excited he's back in New York. But I also feel used. I'm the one who helped him become a better dancer. I helped him shine. Now his shine is eclipsing all of my hard work. Maybe it's better this way. Like you'll have more free time at home. Time for what? Come on, be fair. You know what I'm talking about. I've been patient. Be fair? As in you've just been waiting around for me to eventually agree to whatever you want? I've always been honest with you. You know I want a baby, and honestly, you should too. I think this is a good time. Thrive is almost done. It's a text from Memphis. Why does he want this late at night? He never texts me. So, listen. I was thinking about what you said. Cass, I'm talking to you and you're reading a text. Sorry, it's a work thing. One sec. Professional or not, texting with Memphis right now is the one thing keeping me from continuing this baby convo. It's late. What's up? <sighs> Cass, we need to have this conversation. Would you choreograph evolution with me? Cass, I'm talking to you. Evolution? Really? You can't be a workaholic all the time, Cassie. Yeah. I can't do it alone, and it's not right that I slid in over you. Mm, that sounds dirty. But he didn't mean it that way. Right? Co-directors, right? Strictly professional? Of course, Mrs. Phillips. <laughs> What's so funny, Cassie? Can you please put down the phone and at least agree to talk to the doctor again? What? I don't know, Bo, with Gina's accident and all this stuff, can I just have a second? 
I'm sorry about Gina, but we can't hold back our lives because of the accident. It's time to think about a family. I'm waiting, Mrs. Phillips. I can feel it. Memphis is drawing me into his orbit again. And this could be my chance to finally make my vision into a reality at Harlem Dance. Sure, I might be making a deal with the devil, but this devil is red hot. Sure, honey. That's what I want to hear. Maybe all that dancing will finally come in handy. So will you direct it with me? We can write a new story together. Yes, I will, old man. I'll be at your beck and call. All night if necessary. Shit. We are definitely not keeping this professional. And turn and hold. Yes. Oh, that's feeling good. But the end isn't working. I love how Cassie insists on perfection. She has a picture in her mind and she won't let up until everything matches. An exact crook of arm, a flex foot. The way her elbow folds over her head as she falls backward into me. Trusting I'll catch her. We're alone in the rehearsal studio at Harlem Modern working on Evolution. It's a classic from old Harlem Modern days. But Arlen's agreed to some new stuff. We finished Thrive with the new piece at the end and got standing ovations. Now it feels like people are actually waiting to see what we do next. I'm trying to be respectful, keep things professional, but it's getting harder every day. It doesn't help that our bodies are constantly touching. When we're through for the day, I reach for my towel and look at our notes on the piano. You got any ideas how we transition from the big group piece into our duet? Mm, I've been thinking about that. Take a look at this. She does a transition move that looks familiar. A triple spin that lands in a demi-plie. But her posture is not ballet. It's aggressive, modern. A fusion of modern hip-hop with classical ballet. What was that? <laughs> it's from a piece I made in college. Damn! All I did in college was get drunk. Show me my part. <laughs> she looks both shy and proud as she holds out her hand. We wind around each other, my hands on her back, guiding her forward. Then she gives me a pull and I spin to face her. She gives me a look. She wants me to lift her. I do my best. I don't fully extend, but I get her high enough to drop her back down into my arms. And at the end, we drop to the floor. You are incredible. And heavy. <laughs> Thanks, old man. You think we're ready? I can't remember a time I've been this excited about opening a show. Neither of us is moving. We're chest to chest, our hearts beating in sync. I feel the heat of her body. I haven't stopped thinking about you. Not one second since the preview performance of Thrive. <sighs> Dang. Neither have I. I lean in, but I wait for her to come meet me halfway. When she reaches her mouth up to mine, it's not shy at all. This is the kiss that we've both been holding back for weeks. And then Cassie breaks free, her head falling back onto the floor, frustrated. Oh, this is so stupid. What the hell are we doing? I'm married, Memphis. Me too. Yet we keep ending up like this. We're going to screw up the whole show if we don't figure this out. I know. But there's something happening here, and it's... Undeniable. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should... I don't know. Get it out of our system? I smile and look at her because I'm not sure if she's joking or not. But she's not smiling. She's looking right at me. You serious? We open in a week. Evolution will run two weeks if the reviews are good, and then you're back to Houston, right? One and done. Out of our system. The Carthage Inn Hotel is just two blocks away from here. <laughs> mm, let's go before I change my mind. She stands up and grabs my hand, and we head for the exit. It feels like Christmas morning. But in this moment, one and done seems hard to imagine because I'm not going home after Evolution wraps. I'm just getting started. I came to New York to revitalize my career, and if evolution goes well, I'm going to be here a lot longer than Cassie thinks. Getting a hotel room in the city you live in is as weird as it sounds, but it's done. Do you want me to, uh, put on some music? Like, through your phone? <laughs> that sounds a little depressing. This whole place is depressing. Flowered bedspread, popcorn ceiling. Neither one of us wanted to use our credit card to rent the room, so we pulled our cash. $73. Want to know what $73 gets you in New York? A room that rents by the hour. So if I wasn't feeling cheap to begin with, I certainly do now. What's that sound? I, uh, think it's the bed springs. Maybe the people next door. Classy. We're both standing in the middle of the room, afraid to sit anywhere. The lights are off, but I can still see the stained carpets. Talk about a mood killer. Hey, uh, so maybe we just chalk this one up to simple good old-fashioned Harlem fever, huh? One night with you is like a thousand. If that's all I get, I'll consider myself the luckiest man in New York tonight. Memphis takes my face in his hands and looks into my eyes. Our lips haven't even touched yet, but the way he's looking at me, it's intimate, sensual. So what are you waiting for? If this is the last time, 
I want it to last. But I can't take it anymore. I lean in and capture his lips. For now they're mine, and I refuse to let go. His hands start to wander. I don't stop them. And then our legs are walking by themselves towards the bed. Maybe this ain't the most romantic spot, but it'll do. I couldn't resist Memphis White even if I tried. My girl Mae West said it best. When I'm good, I'm very good. When I'm bad, I'm even better. But I'm betting she wasn't referring to cheating on her husband. Backstage before the curtain call of evolution looks like a competitive yoga retreat. A bunch of dancers camped out on the floor going through their personal stretch routines and pre-performance rituals. Cassie's on her feet shadow boxing, doing an eye of the tiger sort of thing to get pumped up. It's cute. Cass, you doing Tybo? Shut up. I'm just trying to get my heart rate up. <sighs> she looks around to make sure no one's looking at us, winks, and blows me a kiss. Now I'm pumped. I walk over to the curtain to sneak a peek. I'm full of nerves, but we've practiced so much I could do this dance in my sleep. But when I close my eyes, all I can think of is Cassie. I'd be lying if I said I didn't dream about our time together last night. Just as I head back to Cassie, Alexis runs over to her out of breath. <laughs> Cassie, I just saw Bo in the audience. Your man is wearing that suit. He looks hot. I try and pretend I didn't hear that, but Alexis's words are bouncing around in my head like a pinball machine. I wish my wife was here, too. She couldn't make it again. Kids recital. Even worse, this time I'm not sure how I feel about it. One minute, we're up in one minute. Cassie walks over and grabs my hand. This is it? Yeah, it is. Break all the legs. I can hear the shuffles and coughs of the audience as we slip out onto the darkened stage. It's been years since I've danced here to something new and fresh. I squeeze Cassie's hand in the dark. I know when I've done good work, and this is good. The company feels like one person stretching and dipping and moving. And then the stage darkens, and the other dancers fade away. It's just me and Cassie, under the spotlight for a final duet. As we move, I can feel every muscle in both our bodies. The transitions work. The timing works. Then the music slows, and our arms are locked together, and we stop. Cassie looks at me for a few seconds, and I almost stop breathing. I forget about the audience. But the audience doesn't forget about us. And then she folds. Surrender. All the dancers run to the stage for their bows. The house lights go up and I can see the faces of everyone in the audience. They are thrilled. We all know tonight was special, but it's the reviews that matter and determine the fate of the show. Once they're in, either my career takes off like a rocket or I take the next plane back to Texas. That's what I should be focusing on. But right now, all I can think of is the audience member seated in 12C, Cassie's husband, Bo. You may be here for her tonight, brother, but I was there for her last night. You nervous? That's just the New York Times. What's the big deal? A good dance review can make your career, and come midnight, we'll all know where we stand. The whole company is here, along with some of their family members, including Bo, who's beaming at me proudly from across the table. We've all taken over the TikTok cafe, waiting for the clock to hit 12. That's when the Times will deliver their verdict, a verdict that can make or break a show. Everyone's having a grand old time, but I'm focused on my phone, hoping to be the first to download it. And then at 12.01 a.m., bam! It's here! It's live! The whole room pauses as I skim it for buzzwords. Joyful, skillful. Okay, I should read this out loud. Everyone is waiting. Listen up, listen up. Here's what the Times has to say. These days, too much dance, and not just ballet, is too immersed in old music, in old costuming, in old habits. Not so with evolution. This seems to be something else completely. <laughs> Everyone is on their feet and clapping. Even Bo gets into it. Memphis has his head down on his phone, reading the review on his own. Come on, keep going, girl. Okay, okay, okay. Just keep reading, guys. All of this wouldn't be possible without the return of legendary dancer Memphis White, who choreographed new life into evolution. I look up at Memphis. His head is still in his phone. Now I'm starting to get why. Memphis White has created something like a new language and had this critic in tears. Accompanied by his dancer... Cassie Phillips, White exudes a confidence and talent that will undoubtedly ensure a long and brilliant career. Ooh, come in, come in. Stay in control, Cassie. Everyone here knows that you co-directed and choreographed evolutions. It'll be fine. Memphis finally glances over at me and holds his glass up. And let's hear it for Cassie Phillips, the most brilliant choreographer I ever worked with. Cassie, let's go! Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Come on. Talk to him, Memphis. The dancers at the table raise their glasses and scream variations of congratulations, Cassie. Bo comes over and sits next to me, grinning like crazy. He has no idea what this review really means. The New York Times just buried me. He leans over and whispers in my ear. The critic called you out. That's amazing, right? Yeah, great. Hey, I'm pretty exhausted. Can you get us a cab? Of course, baby. I'll meet you outside. 
Before he gets to the door, I'm already on my feet and putting on my coat. Congrats, everyone. Y'all totally took it out of me. See you tomorrow. Maybe I should have been an actress instead of a dancer. I don't think anyone knows how angry and hurt I am. Except maybe for Memphis, who catches up to me just as I reach the door. You, uh, leaving already? Night's over from Memphis. Congratulations on the review. I gotta go. I know you deserve all the credit and more. I'll call the time tomorrow and make this right. Don't bother. It'll only make things worse. I try to walk away. But Memphis takes my hand and gently pulls me toward him again. Cassie, hey, I get it. You work just as hard as I did, maybe even more. I'll set things straight. We got something special here, right? <sighs> it's been a long week. Let's catch up tomorrow, okay? I pull away from Memphis before people start to talk. Bo's outside and holding the cab door open. I walk outside of the restaurant into the crisp New York air. Bo is holding the cab door open like a prince. His warm smile normally brings me comfort and peace. Now all it brings me is guilt and shame. Everything okay, honey? Yeah, just tired. Through the cab window, I can see Memphis still staring at me through the front glass of the restaurant. I wish I could tear myself away from that man and walk away from this mess. Maybe now that he's getting credit for my work, it'll be easier to do. If he doesn't find a way to make this right, I'll have no choice but to walk away. Hi, this is Memphis White. Is this Francine Pascal? Mr. White, yes, amazing. Thank you for calling me back. I'm on the tail end of an all-night celebration. It's been a long, long time coming. The sun is just starting to peek out over the Hudson, and from the back of this Uber, New York has never looked more beautiful. When I check my phone, I see I have at least a half dozen messages. Looks like the review from the Times put a much-needed steroid shot into the ass of my career. But the last message was the most surprising of all. Francine Pascal from the Kennedy Center. We've been reading the reviews for Evolution, and everyone can't stop talking about it. And you. Everyone here is using the word genius. I'm floored. Harlem Modern may be the best regional theater in the city, but the Kennedy Center is global, and they're talking about me? We're all excited about what you're doing and about your story. You left the dance world and came back with a new perspective. It's really inspirational. Wow. That's, uh, well, I'm flattered. We'd like to commission something for Langston Hughes' birthday. Or if you have a different poet who speaks to you, we're open to that as well. Honestly, we just want to be the ones to showcase what you do next. Langston Hughes speaks to me like the Holy Ghost on a Sunday. Well, just assume that's a good thing. <laughs> it's the greatest. What are the details? It would be a fairly quick process. Rehearse eight weeks, then debut for the fall season. We'd love to see you on the Kennedy Center stage. And I would love to be there, but I choreographed Evolution with another dancer, Cassie Phillips. I'm sure you want her too. I could actually get her on the phone right now. Oh, is that who the Times called your muse? <laughs> I'm sorry, we don't have the funding for two choreographers, but if you want to bring her on as a dancer, I'm sure we can figure that out. But it's your story we're interested in. Well, really, Cassie is part of that. She, uh... I understand. But, like I said, budget cuts and all that. Only room for one choreographer. We're just happy to be able to bring your voice to our stage. A national stage, Mr. White. This should be one of the happiest moments of my life, and I ain't gonna lie, it's pretty damn close. But if I say yes, I feel like I'm selling someone out. Someone I care about. But they did say they welcome her as a dancer. She'd be on that stage too. The entire world would see her. She could do anything she wanted after a performance like that. Well, Mr. White, what do you say? I say let's do it. I'm sure Cassie will be thrilled about dancing on your stage, and it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I'll speak to her. Sure, sure, terrific. I'll call your agent for the details. Shit, I need an agent. And a security detail, because Cassie is going to kill me. Doors open. I let myself into Memphis's place and look around. It's one of those long-term stay hotels. Small, but cozy. I'll be out in a sec. I go to sit down on his couch, but I end up damn near lying down instead. I'm exhausted. I agreed to meet Memphis here after last night's opening of Evolution. It was hard to get past the Times review, but I'm going to give Memphis a chance to say his piece. After all... Now that it's a hit, we'll have more shows to do. I'm willing to see where this conversation goes. Worst case scenario, I'll break things off with Memphis and leave the show. Alexis can take my spot, and I can take a break from this chaos. Best case scenario, well, that's yet to be determined. Hey, Cass, thanks for coming. Last night was pretty crazy, huh? Crazy doesn't really describe it. I was crying so much I threw up. Memphis, we need to talk. I know, but first, I have some good news to share. Okay, what is it? Memphis stretches his arms out like a carnival barker. I just talked to Francine Pascal at the Kennedy Center. 
They want to commission a piece for this fall. Adrenaline shoots through me and I'm on my feet. My exhaustion is gone. <laughs> the Kennedy Center? Are you kidding me? When do they want us? What's the project? October. But that's the thing. Now the smile Memphis was wearing disappears, replaced by a serious look. Memphis, what's the thing? Well, it turns out they don't have enough funding for two choreographers, I asked, but... They just want you. Wrong. They want you too, but as a dancer. They specifically said they'd love to have you come down also and dance. Memphis, I'm not your muse. I'm your partner. I know. I, I was just... Shit. There's an awkward silence. I look around the room at the stupid couch and the stupid Ikea table because this is the last time I'm going to see them. Of course, I would love to dance at the Kennedy Center. What dancer wouldn't? But there is no way I'm going out there as Memphis White's muse. So what was your news? And just like that, I know what I'm going to do next. Oh, my news. Right. It's over. I'm leaving the show. What? We're done. I'm proud of how calm I sound, given how angry I am inside. I want to smash his glass of bourbon against the wall. Instead, I pick up my keys and open the door. Wait, can't we talk about this? I want you there with me. It's going to be us. Well, now it's going to be you. Congrats on the Kennedy Center, Memphis. Have a nice life. I'll get to the Kennedy Center without him. I've already made it this far, and I'm ten years younger than Memphis. I'm done being used by him. I left Memphis a few days ago, and since then I've been doing everything I can to get him out of my mind including seeing my gynecologist. That's how much I don't want to think about Memphis. As a dancer, I'm used to being half-naked backstage. Modesty is not a part of the job description. But nothing feels quite as naked as naked at the OBGYN. This is something I never get used to. You can sit up and get dressed. Thanks, Dr. Pierre. Now that things are over with Memphis, I want to make an effort with Bo. Treat him right. And right now, that means not skipping my doctor's appointments. Even if I don't have any plans for a baby yet, I want to make sure I'm healthy when I'm ready. Hi, Cassie. Uh, Dr. Pierre, here are the labs you requested. Thanks, Nancy. Cassie, I'm sorry this took so long. I was wondering what was up. I was beginning to think you were looking for the last coming of Christ. <laughs> I know, sorry. I wanted to be sure. Of? I've never seen Dr. Pierre smile until now. Congratulations, you're pregnant. Now, I know you and Bo have been trying for a while now. I couldn't be happier for you both. I'm, what? I wasn't sure. That's why I did the blood test. But from everything I'm seeing, you should be about five weeks along. Five weeks pregnant? We can schedule your first sonogram next week. Pregnant? I know birth control isn't 100% effective, but I've been careful. This wasn't supposed to happen. I don't feel pregnant. Are you supposed to feel pregnant? I've had some lower back pain, some headaches, but I thought it was stress and too many dance classes. I can't be pregnant. I think about all of the plans I had for my life. Dancing, my career. Now I have to put it all on hold? I walk out of the doctor's office and think about Bo. He's going to be so excited. Maybe it's a sign. This is what's supposed to happen next. The universe is bringing us back together. That's when it hits me. Is the baby even his? If you like our show, please give us a five-star rating and a review. And be sure to tell your friends. Follow True Love on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever you're listening right now. The next episode will be out in a week, or you can listen to it ad-free right now by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app. Another way you can support the show is by filling out a small survey at Wondery.com survey. This is episode two of our four-part series, Dangerous Moves. I'm Justin Walker-White. And I'm Amber Rashawn Williams. Ron McCants wrote this story. Our story editor is Michaela Fly. Our associate producer is Brian White. Sound design is by Brian Cunip. Additional audio assistance by Adrian Tapia. Casting by Kate Geller. Our senior producers are Kevin Arbre and Sochi Dorsey. Our executive producers are Stephanie Jens and Marshall Louis for Wondery.